Hello. Today I will be talking about how your new internal development platform will benefit from treating it uh, something like a startup so you can achieve the goal of scaling digital delivery for your organization. Now thinking like a startup, it is about recognizing that building your internal platform is only part of the battle. You need to get market validation. You have to ship something that is perceived as valuable and useful for your customers. And for an internal platform, your customers are your internal development teams. So you need a marketing pitch. Uh, you will be repeating it over and over um, because you need to convey your value proposition of reduced operational costs, you know, how you can gain speed and agility through the standardization and, and the services that you provide in your platform. And ultimately, you want to aim for getting an internal development platform that acts as a flywheel that accelerates your journey more and more uh, by each individual feature that you put into it. My name is Jon Skarpeteig. Uh, I am the tribe lead uh, of the Global Platform Tribe at Signicat. Signicat is a software as a service company. We have offices uh, all over Europe. Uh, the headquarters uh, where I sit is in Trondheim, Norway. And uh, last year we also made it to the uh, 1000 fastest growing companies uh, in uh, Europe. We provide compliant onboarding, electronic signing, and secure login uh, with the highest level of assurance, uh, which means we cater for regulated industries, financial institutions, government, health insurance. All right, so you built your new internal platform. You got your teams in place, you created something you think will be useful, and you shipped version one, and we're done. This illusion that if you build it, they will come um, doesn't really hold true. If you look at common reasons for why startups are failing, uh, you will see that uh, a lack of marketing or a lack of uh, getting a product market fit, getting something that uh, your users will find useful is the things you wanna focus on. And for a new internal development platform, uh, you might have a new way of working with the team autonomy. You build it, you run it. It might be new architecture of microservices. You might have a new technology paradigm where containerization and cloud native becomes issues. And this should not be treated lightly for someone that is familiar with a different way of working, a different set of technology. This is a barrier to enter. Uh, so you need to be aware of this. So you need to do a lot of product evangelism. Now, you will have some early adopters that are just excited about this new technology. This is not your challenge. Your challenge is the other group uh, that is kind of sitting on the fence. So what is this about? How will this help me? So one trick you can do is to identify a one or more reference customers. Typically uh, a group that will work with you and um, be the advocate as well uh, for using the platform. And you wanna do whatever it takes to make them successful. Um, and any learnings you get on the way, you wanna roll them back into the product, which is your platform, to ensure that this one really solves the need of your reference customers. You want it to be loved by your reference customers. Don't make it so generic that it's just loved by no one. Um, and it's not really great because what you wanna aim for is viral success stories. Uh, so any resistance to change can evaporate. But uh, be a little aware that uh, throwing too much all at once is a challenge with all of these great new technologies, all these opportunities, all of the things that you offer and use in your platform can be a bit overwhelming. So you want to be the shield that uh, you know protects uh, a little bit, so that uh, the teams uh, can relax and uh, you know 
generally have a have a good time for it uh, when starting out. Now, one of the advantages that you get with platform engineering is this concept of the platform as a product. That means that you can leverage product management techniques, which have books written about it, and it's a lot of inspiration you can get and how you can leverage that, how you can understand the value that your customer is looking for. Um, and if you find that what you have made does not align with what your customers, your development teams actually need, you need to change because the customer is the one that will be using it. And, um, need to react to that. Of course, you have some basics uh, that you have to have in place. If you do not have your guarantees of security, compliance and reliability, you will not succeed. Uh, but for other features, uh, you can use a very useful uh, technique called product discovery. Now, this is where you evaluate your new wonderful idea on how you will make everyone's lives easier. Um, then you evaluate the risks of introducing it. I mean, the risk here is if it's just wasteful, because if nobody's using the feature, if nobody's using your platform, it is waste. So somebody uh, must find it valuable. They want to, so they want to use it. Uh, it has to be you know, possible to use it. Uh, the people are able to figure out how to use it. And it has to be possible to build it, obviously, otherwise you can't make it. Um, and finally, you have to address the viability risk. Is platform engineering the group you want building this? How does this fit with the overall strategy you have with your internal platform? Does it fit? And your opinion on this is not enough. You need to collect evidence from the ones that uh, will actually be using it from your customers. You also, of course, need to market it. You have to explain what the value you provide, how do you help your customers, your dev teams. And it also is about getting people on board. How do they get started, getting the documentation up to speed. And uh, it has to be as good as you would have made it for paying customers. Um, it is the same experience you want to aim for. You have one advantage with this being an internal platform is that the customers is your internal teams. And hopefully you will know your colleagues, you will know your organization, you will know where they hang out, you will know how to reach them. At least uh, the things that are happening inside of your organization already. Um, Internal leakies, be sure to uh, put your information up there. If there are any product catwalks, forums, present your solution, present your platform as a product, brag about it, be proud. And one thing I found very useful in conveying a lot of information in a short amount of time is visualizations. Um, you know, getting your logos right, getting some uh, architecture diagrams, getting something visual to represent what you're offering um, and be sure to uh, distribute it, get it into the hands, be visible in the organization. Um, this has some advantages. One is to, uh, of course, drive adoption, but it is also about ensuring you avoid duplication because if uh, people don't know that you're offering a specific feature or service in your platform and they need it, they will build it themselves. So be visible and marketing, it kind of never ends. Uh, it is a key thing to, uh, to um, get uh, the outcome you're looking for. Eventually your platform matures. Um, it gets out of this minimum viable stage. Uh, it is stable, it is perceived and it's generally useful. And you have actual revenue generating products on the platform and uh, you get the good adoption and you kind of focused more on the long tail, the, the smaller groups, the ones that haven't really migrated yet. And you will notice 
that your efforts is no longer front and center of um, the organization, your efforts will fade more and more out of sight. If you worked as a sysadmin long enough, you will probably recognize what I like to call the sysadmin dilemma. Because when everything works, uh, your infrastructure is up and running, everything is uh, progressing nicely, nobody notices your work and you get your budget cut because what's the point? Everything just works, right? When nothing works, everyone do notice, but well, nothing works. So, well, you get to be the hero, which feels nice, but that incentivizes more problem creation than uh, problem prevention. You don't want that. Uh, you absolutely want to incentivize problem prevention. And what you want to aim for is the flywheel effect. Because getting off the grounds, creating a new internal development platform, it takes a lot of efforts. It is heavy lifting. And it takes some push to kind of get it started, get the thing rolling. But after a while, you will see that um, it kind of rolls on its own. Uh, if you get kind of the, the breakthrough speed, it kind of almost builds momentum by itself. Because you will have a delightful software delivery, you have your continuous deployment pipeline, it's well documented, it's like a golden path, obviously this is the way to do it. And you get more and more people to do it. This wonderful path that you have paved. And when you have fewer ways of doing things, you get standardizations. And with standardization, um, there is less things to worry about and you get to put um, more effort into you know, fewer hosting providers. So you can actually leverage your marketing power and you get economics of scale. And um, with economics of scale, that means also that um, you can uh, operate more efficiently, you get more free time to even reduce the operational cost even more. Now, if you are able to get a 1% uh, less work for every single developer in your organization, it will have a huge impact for the organization overall if you have a large crowd that is using your service. And with reduced operational costs, that means your development teams can spend less time worrying about it, and they can spend more time focusing on solving paying customer problems. And your platform teams can invest even more time to make an even more delightful delivery cycle, which drives standardizations, which drives the economics of scale, and on and on it goes. Now, uh, to make sure that you kind of get an accelerated speed, you need measurements, you need your KPIs. One uh, set of metrics I can recommend is the DORA metrics, uh, which is uh, measuring organizational efficiency to some extent. It comes out of uh, Google research. And it's quite nice, you should, uh, you should check it out if you, you're not already, because then you can see what your efforts actually produce if you're getting these accelerated uh, results that you're hoping for. Um, so you, know, you improved your documentation. Did it actually help? Did we get better metrics? Um, the self-service uh, initiatives have launched. Does it help? Because you want to optimize for outcomes. How your group or the internal development platform helps the overall organization. That is the key. That is what will make you successful. Thank you for watching. That's what I had. I will be sticking around for the platform con to uh, answer any questions or if you want to reach out, please don't be shy. Hope to see you there.